I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you solution of question number 17, page 53 from Nelson. This is for my student Maria and I hope it helps all other students also. Sketch the graph and discuss continuity of the function f of x equals 2 x times absolute value of x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 when x is not equal to 1 and when x equals to 1 the value of the function is 0, right? So we have an absolute function here. Mario, whenever there is an absolute function, we have to look at it as a piecewise function, right? So let us redefine our function first. What is the meaning of absolute value of x minus 1? It means the value of this function is x minus 1 if x is positive value of this. Positive means x is greater than or equals to 1. And it is equals to negative of x minus 1 if x is less than 1. So that is how it is defined. So whenever you have a function involving absolute function, you have to always see it in as two parts, right? So let me divide it in two parts first. Well graph here on this side, so I have enough room there. So let us first begin by writing the function. So we will think about the domain split into two halves, one x less than 1, the other one where it is greater than or equal to 1, right? Now, we are given here that f of x is equal to uh, all this. So when it is less than 1, in that case, f of x is equal to, uh, I mean, not equal to 1, but less than 1, then the absolute part could be written as minus of x minus 1. So I'll write this as x times minus, I'm writing outside, of x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. And x minus 1, x minus 1 cancel, we get minus x. Now, for greater than or equal to 1, let us consider just greater than since it is not equal to 1. So, we will consider only greater than. So, when x is greater than 1, then absolute function could be written as x minus 1. So, in this case, I have f of x equals to x times x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Correct? Now, x minus 1, x minus 1 cancel and we get f of x equals to x. So, let me rewrite f of x also. So in this interval, it is x. Now at 1, we know it is 0. So we don't have to worry about it. So that is how our function is. Now, it's easier for us to sketch. Correct? So we have, in fact, three parts of this function. So the first part is when x is less than 1. So let us say this is, this is 1 for us. Let us say, okay. So if that is 1 for us, we know at 1 the value is 0. So, so let's just put at 1 the value is 0. So this is the value at 1. So this is this part done. Correct? Now let's look into the first part which we have split into two halves. On the left side of 1 it is minus x. Right? So if I have a value 1 here minus will be minus 1. So kind of like this. Right? So but we have a hole here. Correct? Since this point is not included right now if i write x as 0 it will be 0 right so that will be included if i write x as minus 1 will be minus 2 so in a way what you find here is that this will be a line which will go like this is that okay so that is the left side on the other hand if x is greater than 1 if i write 1 here i get x equals to 1 so there is a hole here at 1 since that is not included and as the x value increases this line actually goes up like this to the right side so what we have here is this point is 1 for us this is minus 1 here we have the function f of x this is x for us and that helps you to sketch the given graph so whenever you have an absolute function split into two so basically you're looking at function now like this let's rewrite this function so we have three parts so first part says f of x equals to x times x minus 1 over x minus 1 when x is not equal to 1, right? So, okay, we will change this to when x is uh, less than 1, right? So, okay, so we have taken the positive value when x is greater than 1, perfect. Then the second part we will write this as minus of x minus 1 over x minus 1 when x is less than 1 
and when x is equal to 0 then the value is 0 so that is how the function is and of course these two parts simplify to minus x and plus x uh, I mean plus x from this side and minus x here as shown in that part correct so that is how you have to look at it I hope that helps so all absolute functions should be solved in this fashion then you will get them correct all the time I hope that makes things absolutely clear thank you and all the best